Welcome back, everybody, to We're Live, pal. I'm Double G here hanging out with Andrew Zarian. And Andrew, before we get to all the stuff that we're going to talk about today, the F4W convention in Las Vegas, we're starting to promote it a little bit. And you and I both have, have been to the event. Uh, the, the one that you went to, you did have to leave a little bit early, so you didn't get to hang out for the entire time. But uh, any interest on your end into going to Las Vegas this year? Well, I'll, t I'll tell you this while I fix my headphones here. Sorry. Uh, I, I had a blast. It, it was so much fun going two years ago with you guys uh everybody there is so awesome everybody's so nice and everybody had a great time uh it, it was just a total total uh amazing trip i can't go because i got a lot of work obligations here however um i don't know if you know the news but i'm gonna be traveling to las vegas a little bit more often now oh wow you're gonna have your own I'm going on friday <laughs> yeah i'm going on friday i'm in vegas on friday so it is possible. My answer was going to be, no, I'm not joining anybody this year because I'm not going to Vegas. But it is very possible that I may be going this year. So, Oh, wow. Because of work at around the yeah. same time. Get around the same time. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I There's going to be a, a couple of, I guess, one specific change this year in the convention. Uh, the Q&A and meet and greet is not going to be Brian and Dave this year because Dave has a family obligation that weekend. It is instead going to be Brian and Vinny. And if, nice. you, remem if you remember when we had Vinny on, I had him kind of discuss the origin story of the actual convention. And the yeah. actual convention was Ed in San Antonio and Brian and Vinny, along with others who were out there, so this is kind of a, a little bit of a throwback to the original convention by having Brian and Vinny at the center of the meet and greet and the Q&A. So that should be a ton of fun. I mean, if you enjoy the Brian and Vinny show, you know, you're going to get that in, in real life, in, in, in live and in person, which is a very different dynamic than the Brian and Dave Wrestling of yeah. the Radio show. So if you are a fan of those guys, uh, this is a unique opportunity because I'm assuming that the future ones will be Brian and Dave as long as Dave is able to go. But because he cannot, Vinny steps in, and I think it creates a much different dynamic, very fun dynamic. Uh, also, the all-you-can-eat dinner at Texas Day Brazil, you did make that one, didn't you? Did, I did, didn't yeah. Yes, we did. Make, you did yeah, make that fantastic. one. Uh, then there's a, a pro wrestling show, uh, Ed in San Antonio, Poder Seis, so the sixth show that Ed has actually promoted. That is crazy. Uh, there will be a sweet party, and my favorite part of last year, as far as the events were concerned, was the annual brunch at the Wicked Spoon. I kind of like, I just n didn't usually do that one, but last year when my wife came, I was like, you know what, let's do the brunch, and that was absolutely fantastic. So all of those uh, all those things are part of the weekend, and you can buy tickets uh, already. The the uh, the link is up. Uh, it, it is a link to uh, Eventbrite. But I will we'll we'll put the whole post that's on the website right now into our show notes. But you can also just go to F Four W Online, and you can find the uh, convention post if you are interested in joining. Uh, like I said, I think I'll I'll probably go. I'm I'm not only reason I'm not 100 percent sure is just because. I have to figure out, you know, the where I'm going to stay and how long I'm going to be there. And I don't, I don't think my wife is going this year. It's usually it's always around my birthday. So there's stuff that I have to kind of figure out. But I, I love going. Uh, Vegas is a lot different than it was when we first started doing this in the uh, late 20, uh, late 2000s, early 2010s. Uh, but uh, it is still a blast. So if you can make it, I would say go for it and if I, I I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be there. So I will completely uh, be uh, happy to to meet up with anybody who who is a fan of this show, who listens to me on Wrestling Observer Radio, listens to Fight Game Podcast, uh, all that. Um, so tons of fun. All right. Now let's talk about what we're what we were going to start with before I remembered that we had to plug the convention. Big business, Andrew. I feel like. Yes, sir. You've been at the center of big business 
since before it was even big business. Lots of tweets coming your way. Uh, no, man. What do you know? What do you know? You don't. <laughs> how do you? Were you there? Did you see the paper get signed? Were you there? I can't wait until all these bozos. And then you know what? You know what it's going to be? They're going to write, who cares? Yeah. Eh, meh. Who cares? That's going to be their answer. Same bozos that said it's not happening. Same people. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little aggressive about this. <laughs> no, I mean, if, if you know, if anybody who's kind of been out there on this story, it has been you. And I can imagine you even mentioned on this show uh when, when it first started happening you're like yeah that the the the, the sasha fan base the mercedes fan base very very passionate very passionate yeah. fan base there yeah i could say a lot more i definitely can <laughs> i'm choosing not to but uh yeah i it was it was always happening uh it you know i i was always told soon uh, because they didn't really have a set date when I initially heard. And then uh, the date has always been this. It's been the 13th for uh, months. They they pick the venue. They they have a plan. I've been told that they have a really good plan for her. Um, and we could already see that some of the pieces are happening, right? People are taking shots at her. Mm -hmm. uh, Serena Deeb would be, uh, Serena would be a fantastic first opponent. Would you do that match on TV or would you save that for the Dynasty show? I don't know. You know, I, I think you can save it. And I think it would be a good showing for Serena. You know, uh, this is such a different person from who was in WWE. And she never got to show this. And obviously she got hurt and she had to go away for a little bit. But um, I, I think it would be a very good first opponent for her. Also, you have Sheeta there, which is a fantastic opponent for her. Yeah, uh, you have Tony. St I mean, the the list it, it goes on and on. I'm just very curious at the presentation. Who do we get? Mm -hmm. What kind of Mercedes do we get tomorrow? That that's the question everybody should be asking. Now I don't know who's hurt, who's healthy, who they're saving, who is just unable to wrestle. I think her first two opponents, if you want to make a big splash. And you're not putting her quite yet in the title picture because I think Tony Storm, if she is still the champion, by you know whenever whenever you you want to do so. But, but essentially, I think if you have Mercedes on the show, you are guaranteed to have one women's match that's big promoted. Now, if you have the title on somebody else, then that's a second match, and that's what I would like to see. Like Mercedes can definitely just go in and, and win the title from on day one. But then I worry that, you know, the, the, then you only, you know, if you don't have great programs for some of the other women, then maybe you're only getting, you know, like the last pay-per-view. Yeah. You only had one women's match on the actual pay-per-view event. So I would like to see Mercedes have some, you know, maybe create some grudge matches for her before going after the title. And the first one that I would do, I think most people would say that this is kind of an, an easy one, which is, is Britt Baker, but we also have not seen Britt Baker. We saw Britt Baker yeah. uh, on Twitter doing some, uh, I think she was singing at somebody's concert uh, on stage. We've seen her with Mercedes and Sasha and, uh, and Bianca and maybe Naomi, I think, at the Super Bowl. They were all together. So she's out there. I don't know if she is available or not, but that would be I think an intriguing first opponent and it, you know, the, the wrestling is what the wrestling is, but Britt Baker is one of the bigger stars in AEW when it comes to the crowd reaction and such. And I think she would get a big response in her comeback if she's Mercedes well, I, first big opponent. I don't know what Britt's status is, but I, I, I do want to say this. I do hope that uh, forget about the fans, right? Because there's going to be criticism from every side for every reason. But as far as the talent goes, you know, you don't get too many opportunities to get a big star, one of the top stars in your field, to show up. I mean, she, Sasha Banks is probably in the top 10 most important women for this modern era of wrestling. I mean, arguably, you could put her wherever. You could put her number two. You could put her number one. It doesn't matter. She's in that top ranking. Mm-hmm instrumental in that women's evolution or whatever they called it, you know, uh, Stephanie McMahon called it instrumental. 
Lan- Lance a- would like us to call it a revolution, by the way. A revolution. Because, okay. Yeah, he he thinks that a that's women's the wrong revolution. Term. Yeah. I I however, you know, she she also is a a perfect example of what the developmental system in WWE could do for women's wrestling. And it did. Uh, I we talk about this regularly, right? Like, give me the top guys that came out of uh, NXT without any kind of pre-existing, you know, and New Japan world title reign or a Ring of Honor situation. You know, n- name those guys because there's not too many of them that are on the top level. Name the women's side. It's all of them. Everybody, you know, the top women in NXT uh, that were virtually unknown have become top women in the main roster. It's a little bit different, right? Men's wrestling is is way differently than women's wrestling. Fortunately, unfortunately, however you see it. But this is an opportunity for that entire women's locker room in that company to become something much more than it is right now. Not that it's mm-hmm. bad, but you have one of the pioneers of this modern era on your roster willing to work with you and educate you and propel you in a main event position. You don't get that opportunity, and I hope everybody realizes, and men, women, it doesn't matter. The whole company realizes that this could be very important for them. I'm not saying it will be. I'm saying it could be. I don't know. I don't know if the audience is going to reject it or the work quality is going to be, you know, five stars every time. I, I, I just hope that people realize that this is another one of those opportunities like they'd had with Punk, and they need to capitalize on it. Mm-hmm. I think... You know, the, the wrestling, like even even though we know wrestling isn't a true sport in the sense of, you know, wins and losses not being predetermined and such, but it is still competitive. But like you said, Mer- you know, Mercedes is going to be a, a very knowledgeable person for whomever is working with with the women's uh, with, with with the women talent and the men's talent as well, because she comes from a place where presentation is a big part of the act. And I think yeah. a lot of people could use help with that stuff, right? Like presentation is is not everything. And in AEW, maybe it's even less than it is in WWE. But she's gonna have knowledge of that. She's gonna have she's gonna have knowledge of the bad stuff that she didn't like about WWE as mm-hmm. well, right? You know, yeah, yeah, this worked for WWE, but this didn't really work and they still do it. And I'm not exactly sure why. I think she could be helpful there. But ultimately what what should happen in 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 situations like this is you bring in somebody who's you know maybe a level up higher than some of the younger wrestlers and i like a lot of the the younger talent we we've seen the queen queen amanada we've seen trisha dora i hope both of those women get signed and become all elite i think they have lots of you know that they, they are really good prospects for for a a growing women's division but everyone should sort of have to step their game up when you bring in somebody yeah. like mercedes uh jamie hater it, it would would be my second opponent for mercedes and maybe you do yes. that one at wembley but again we don't know what's going on with jamie hater i you know she, we shed the injury but she was awesome and she was becoming one of the one of the best women in all of wrestling hey and you know it happened twice hurt. it happened twice didn't it it happened with statlander the statlander got so over and she messed uh, up with me and she messed up her knee. Long Island's own Chris Statlander. Got to gotta give a big up to Long Island. And uh, Jamie got hurt. And both of those women, and it almost came out of nowhere, right? Like the crowd saw something. They ran with it. And then the at-home audience continued. And which is exactly the way you want to kind of get over with this stuff. Uh, unfortunate. You know, she got hurt. Both of them got hurt. So yeah. maybe this is the reset for both of them. You know, they come back and now they have a tremendous, tremendous opponent to go up against. And everybody's yeah, looking and, to prove something, including Mercedes. And hopefully what happens is the women's division grows and it gets better and it attracts other good wrestlers. You know, we saw Jordan Grace at the Royal Rumble and I was like, yeah. man, you could drop her in to Monday Night Raw tomorrow and she'd be really good. So you just open up more opportunities in the business once you kind of level up your game and maybe you know this isn't really uh i'm not discrediting tony but i think i think you know what a lot of people would have thought is that because of his style and because of how different AEW is from wwe 
that the women's division would have grown a lot faster than it has because he brings in women from Japan. Uh, Thunder Rosa was given a shot and, you know, the sheet got hurt, too. That was another one that we didn't mention. So I think this is a great opportunity for every for the entire division to kind of raise up a level. And it's going to be great for the product. Uh, you lose a Jade Cargill and you and you gain a, a Mercedes Monet. I think that's a really good trade. It works out for yeah. both companies. WWE, we'll see with Jade. They still have not really done much with her yet. Uh, I'm I'm assuming it's coming at the at WrestleMania at some point, but you know you you send over the prospect and you kind of get the all star and that, that you know that that's a it it wasn't actually a trade but it works out well like that and I want to see Mercedes you know I've been waiting for her I thought when right before she left WWE I was like man this woman is really really got it she's really uh, you know she was one of the pandemic the few pandemic stars right her and Bailey yeah. when they were together like we were watching that terrible terrible pandemic stuff and she and and bailey kind of leveled up during that time frame so we know she's got the chops yeah i'm looking forward to it I'm, i want to see what happens tomorrow all right what else is on this show I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a little bit of a rundown and you give me your kind of your thumbs up or thumbs down or how interested you are in, in these matches and we'll start with the ftw champion hook and now he's just Lionheart Chris Jericho now. Like, that's who he is. Yeah, he's now. back. He's go yeah, we're back. He's 1996, back baby. <laughs> yeah. And Chris Jericho against the Gates of Agony. What is your interest? All right. Here? I, I mean, is, is Chris going to turn on him and challenge him for the FTW title? You know, <laughs> do we get do we get heart? Do we get the pain maker that comes back and challenges for the FTW title? I don't know. Chris is at the, in this weird crossroads with his career, right? Like he he doesn't know. Yeah. I know I know the Kenny Omega thing happened, and and that probably took him away from a big program when it was him and Kenny Omega together. And now he's just finding stuff to do. He's been wrestling the the CMLL Luchadors who are coming in, and now he's he's with Hook. And it seems like you know there maybe maybe Hook replaces Kenny Omega, and maybe they do become like this really really good tag team. And, and in that upper echelon. And we'll see what happens when it comes to this tag tournament. But you know what? Even more than Hook and Jericho, I really like the Gates of Agony. I wish that they would do a little bit more with them. They're, they're, they're pretty much, they, they, they've been given a specific level of, of where they are, and, but they're unique and they're different. I, I think they're impressive. I would just like to see them do more with the Gates of Agony. Yeah, I think that Ring of Honor uh, situation is a little confusing for everybody. And I think that's why some of these guys, you don't see them too often. You see them sometimes, you see them in the squash match, but really they're not a prime focus. Um, I don't know. It's too much, too many moving parts, right? At the same time, and some people get lost. But I, I do like them. I do like Gates of Agony. We'll talk about these moving parts here when we get to Okada, because that's the one that's confusing yeah. to me. All right, Willow Nightingale with... Uh... Uh, Stoke, Rio. my guy Stoke against Riho. What is your interest level here? Um, I, I like Riho. Uh, I want to see, you know, this is a nice test for Willow, uh, for this match. I, and Will is very liked. Um, I don't know what the work quality is going to be, but I think it'll be, a, it'll be fine. It's, a, you know, it's another display for both of them to be on a big show. And that's what you want. You want to display your talent and what they could do. And I think everybody should take that opportunity with tomorrow's show. Riho is an amazing baby yeah. face. I do wonder if Willow shows some heel shenanigans a little bit here. Because otherwise, it's just like two lovable baby faces. In and she's so lovable. Like, what a great smile, <laughs> like a likable face. Like, you see Willow and you're like, I don't want to I don't want to dislike you. You know, no, I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I like her. Uh, Darby Allen, Jay White. Uh, this is interesting because they're basically telling us that Darby Allen is going away. So I don't know if you necessarily need the baby face beat down to give him a reason to go away. We already know he's going away. He says that he's going away. So the booking here is going to be pretty interesting. I would imagine Jay White wins, but I don't think I you have to. Too. I don't think you have to do what we would normally think that they would do in a match like this where, where the guy's going away because they've already told us. Uh, but you know, you know, what's really weird about this. So you would think, okay, coming off of the sting, uh, retirement, who actually 
can gain from that moment, right? Sting is gone. The Bucks are heels. Darby seems like he should be the one gaining from that moment. And then it's like, oh, no, nope, I'm just leaving too. So it's like we both retired, yeah. but you Well, it looks retired. like the Bucks are gaining from it, right? The Bucks are definitely gaining from it because this is a, I mean, for the last two years, they've taken a back seat. At least the last 18 months, they've really taken a back seat to everything else that's happening. Obviously, the CM Punk stuff didn't help and a bunch of other things, but uh, now they seem like they're, they're, they're the ones that are front and center uh, after the Sting stuff. Yeah. Which yeah. is interesting, because they were obviously, you would imagine that Darby would be the one. Well, they did get Okada, right? They, 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 they got, did get Okada. They did get Okada on their side. So uh, that is that is... You know the benefit of having Okada is is uh, I mean the benefit of 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 that is having Okada. I'm I'm messing with my lights here. Sorry. Oh, what happened? Where are you? <laughs> Where do we go? <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I you know the Bucks, but it's it's not like the Bucks kind of really needed. They needed the kick in the butt, but theirs is all sort of directionally, creatively, not about necessarily wins and losses. I just thought you know Darby and Sting win this match, and maybe you propel him to to a much higher level, but. You know, he is he is also leaving at the same time. So, all right. Now we got uh, the elite, the Bucks and Okada against Eddie Kingston, Penta and Pac. Now we'll use this as a little bit of a transition to also talk about Okada's debut or re-debut as a member of the AEW roster. He showed up last week unannounced, uh, though it did do the best quarter of, of the entire show on Dynamite at the top of the hour. And he showed up to, uh, uh, if anybody thought that he was saving Eddie Kingston, I, I hope not. I hope people don't actually think that because it was pretty telegraphed that he was going to come in and, uh, and beat up poor Eddie Kingston, who got beat up uh, three yeah. and four on one, two shows in a row. It sucked for him. Uh, and so Okada comes out. He's with the Bucks. And my question to you, is if Eddie Kingston and Okada is our next feud, does Okada care about this Triple Crown belt? Like, what is his reasoning for wanting to win this title? I mean, I would imagine he should win, right? I mean, I one of the most dominant professional wrestlers of all time, if, you know, arguably. Uh, I would say he should win. He should win that title. He shouldn't lose to Eddie. Uh, if there was anybody that, you know, you would think like, well, of course, Eddie lost. It's Okada. That would be the moment. And also, there is a New Japan connection, right, with that title. New Japan strong connection, not New Japan IWGP so, connection. Okay, so if, if Okada wins that belt, right, is yeah. he's yeah. also the Ring of Honor champion. Yes. Right? Yes. Does that go in the lineage of the title? It does. I think so. I mean, what a great way to get a TV deal, Tony. Put that title on Okada and be like, look who we have. Look who's our world champion. It's Okada. Yeah, um, I mean, I, maybe, I, you're, maybe you maybe you can sell ROH television in Japan as well. Maybe you can sell ROH to television in Japan. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to see him with that title. Come out with all of I, them, you know? So I kind of debated this on the fight game podcast with john the rock i think we were both a little negative on it but after talking to dave on saturday night if this title on okada becomes like a top level title like maybe just underneath the AEW world title and okada elevates this thing then i think it's actually really useful i, I you know I, i'll still have the issue of why okada would want this belt because of the New Japan Strong affiliation, like he he's above that affiliation, but at the same time, you know, if if it is now on AEW television, and if you can elevate this belt, and like Okada becomes like the Gunther champion, where he doesn't lose like ever, and he just holds it for like a year and a half, and then by the time he does finally lose that belt, it's it, I think it's in, in a much better place. With Eddie Kingston, Eddie Kingston's great. He's he's the worker champion. Like he's the fighter. He's not, he's backs down from nobody. But still, the way that he's booked in AEW, he isn't booked like a top guy. He's booked like an upper mid card guy. Even though he did beat Brian Danielson, so I yeah. I just think uh, on Okada, this belt does 
uh, it does really, really get elevated if it's the story that I'm thinking of. And, and maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just thinking too much into this. But yeah, I didn't yeah, originally maybe... like the affiliation, but now I kind of dig it. Yeah, maybe it's not. Maybe it is. Um, the the other thing, you know, we do know that AEW was actively had a secondary world title and there were going to be plans for it. Yeah, you know, Punk those, had that those... Punk had that belt, whatever that belt was going to be called, the real world championship. He had it and there were some sort of plans. Yeah. You know, that, whether that, or not that... it was going to be defended every week or it was going to be unified with MJF. They they had something there and. You know, I'm not against elevating that title or the uh, what's the other one? Not the Intercontinental. I, I want to keep calling it the Intercontinental title. Uh, Roddy's uh, belt. Not the, the international Atlantic. title. What is it now? The international title. There you go. Uh, you know, you, you were could the one who that. had the international name. I did. I know. Else. I know. I had the All Atlantic name and the international name. My brain just stopped. You know what the <laughs> problem is? Whenever I think international title, guess who shows up in my head? Rick Rude. Yeah. I agree. That's the only person I think when I think of international title. Um, you could elevate both of them. You could do something. I, I, I love that Okada's there. I just hope it's not a redo of Kenny's heel run mm -hmm. with it being a little clunky and awkward, you know, because I don't think people wanted to see a heel Kenny at that point as a world champion. He had a great run. He did fantastic, but that's not what I, that's not what I wanted. So... I don't know. My, I'm still debating whether or not you know I like a heel Okada or not. But he's he's fantastic. That that was the best squash match I've ever seen. He beat That's those boys best. up really well. The Bucks <laughs> he, laughing uh, on the apron. I was I was very entertained. Here's the other reason why the idea of Okada having this triple crown title or whatever they call it. If the idea is, you know, we're gonna keep it on this dude. And we're just going to wait for Kenny Omega to get healthy again. And then when Kenny Omega is healthy again, that's the title he's going after. And we get to see Omega Okada again. Like, I'm in. I don't, I don't I, you know, I'm, I'm forward booking again. This may not yeah. be the plan. But, man, that would be amazing. So I'm 100% in for, for this version of Okada. I think it's going to be entertaining. I don't know if he's going to make a hill of beans, you know, as far as business is concerned. I don't think ratings are going to be all that helped out or pay-per-views. But for my entertainment value as a wrestling fan of good matches and the way that he can be that grumpy old, you know, the, the holier-than-thou character, like nobody's on my level, I think it's great. Yeah. You know who I want to see him with? Adam Copeland. Who? I want oh, to yeah. see Copeland and Okada. I don't know why. You know what I want to call it? The battle of the deceivingly larger than you think men. <laughs> I know, poor, uh, poor Luchasaurus. He's like, dude, do I have to really have to now be right next to you of all people? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. People used to think I was uh, a giant. And now you just come in and 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 you're just as big as I am. No, well, that's a that great match, by the way. Fantastic match. I would love that. I would love to. By see the that. way, as an aside, are you interested in this Christian and? Adam Copeland. I was. I want it to come to an end. Yeah. I want to have an answer. I, whether uh, either uh, uh, Adam wins, which I, I, I think he should. Uh, I, I always, you know, they almost did this backwards, right? Shouldn't he have come out? They could have tagged for a little bit, done something, and Christian turns on him, and then you build the feud. It, shouldn't they have done it that way? I mean, this is probably their story right uh, oh, my sure. buddy this uh, is what they want to do my buddy jeremy feinstone who watches this show he always kind of says like he's like yeah we're getting all the stuff that uh when when adam and jay were like in high school that they were dreaming up about and and writing down as and when when they finally got to face each other this is all the stuff that that they were going to do so I, I would assume that they had a, a big influence in what we're seeing on the on the product yeah all right, yeah. and then we got our main event here. Samoa Joe against Wardlow. I am not into this match at all. You're not into it? At all. I'm, I'm not looking forward to this in any way. Yeah. Uh, it came out of nowhere, really. I mean, we know that he won, and, and that's how they're doing it. But, they, you know, they, they haven't really... They haven't really done much with Wardlow. I mean, they're trying again. 
but he had his opportunity with after MJF and it just went nowhere. So that same convention in Las Vegas that you went to, I think yeah, that was MJF that was and Wardlow, right? Yeah. Wardlow was at the highest of peaks of his career. And from that moment until now, it has gone downhill. And now he's in this match again. And I'm just like, yeah, he's just an, he's just another notch in the Samoa Joe title reign. Like I don't even I don't even want to see this guy win. Yeah, I mean we all know that there's no chance of that, right? But I I would I would hope lead to something. You know, I hope it's not just like he goes out there and just loses to Joe and that's it. I I hope it you know helps him get elevated. But he is in the main event of a very important show for them. Didn't you know, Samoa he has a Joe title match? Didn't Joe cut off his man bun or something the last time? Because they had a was feud. Joe who cut it? Who cut remember, off his man bun? I just remember they they had a feud, which was actually pretty good. But it was it was before Joe became the Joe that he is today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. um, Joe versus Wardlow. Let me see when this was. Uh, yes. I, you know, people are posting weird videos and I'm looking here and I'm like, oh, here it is. Wardlow defeats Samoa Joe for to win the AEW world title. I'm like, oh, no, that's the video game. <laughs> Somebody made it in the video game. By the way, did you get your kids uh, w the new WWE 2K? You know, I have to tell you, uh, my my son wants it. And I have such a difficult time playing that game. It's too advanced for me at this point. And uh, I just beat Spider-Man. <laughs> there you go. Spider-Man 2, which is which is a fantastic game. I beat it with my son. So I, I, I'm thinking about getting it and just like trying to dedicate like six hours into learning how to play so that here, game again. Here, here's what you need to do, because I'm on the same okay. page as you. I haven't played I hadn't played a WWE 2K game since the PS4. And this is we're talking like Stone Cold Steve Austin's on the cover of this game. So it's been like eight years or something. Uh, and so yeah. I did I did buy it and I bought it because of the hook of this 40 years of WrestleMania, which that mode is kind of disappointing. But I decided, like, you know what? I haven't played this game in a while. I'm not going to be playing it a ton. MLB, the show's coming out and that'll be most of the time that I play video games. But I did make my character and I did. I do want to go through the uh, the storylines. I think it's called My Rise or something. So there's two storylines. Now the first storyline, if you if you have a male character, Roman Reigns retires. Okay, and he goes to Hollywood. <laughs> so you need to like be the next guy. Like that's what you're, you're you're attempting to become the next, you know, the next top guy. And on the women's side. You come from the indies and you kind of go through the NXT stuff. So I created my character and I will attempt to do some of this storyline. But yeah, the, the, the 40 years of WrestleMania is what I was interested in the most. And I tried it and there's like 14 objectives that you're that you're supposed to do in, in the match. And uh, I pinned Randy Savage as Ricky the Dragon, but... I only got through three of the 14, so I, I need to figure out. How to do it. But there is a tutorial. It took me about an hour to go through the tutorial and figure out all the moves. It took a lot longer creating my character because it is so meticulous. At some point, I just gave up and I was like, I, I'm just going to put in the finishers and let's go from here. But yeah, that took a long time. But the tutorial yeah. aspect of how to actually play it took like an hour and it's not it's not that hard. It, it's actually pretty intuitive. So. I would say get the game and uh, you and your son yeah. create the next tag team champions. Yeah, maybe I'll do that this weekend. Uh, you know, he plays he plays fight forever all the time. Interesting. Because it's so simple. It's so simple. My son's six. You know, he's yeah. not even. Yeah, seven no, yet. It's, it's perfect. So for him. for him, it's it's like perfect button mashing and he and he plays it and he likes it, you know, so he enjoys it. But I, I totally understand why people got bored with it. It's it, there's no thrills. It's just a very basic. It's exactly what they said they were doing. They were building no mercy. And that's what they gave you without any of the, you know, video games in the last 25 years have really evolved. And I think that's part of the issue here. The releases are too, they take too long though. They barely put swerve in the game like a couple months ago. Yeah. Like it just yeah. takes too long. Um, 
Yeah, I actually pulled it off of my machine. So I just donated 70 bucks to the Tony Khan Foundation. <laughs> Didn't really play. I, you know, dude, I got it. I, I have I gave a copy to Rich. I had an extra copy. I gave him one and then my kid plays it. It's it's fine. Yeah. No, I, I know I know people who play it with their kids and they get a kick out of it. So that that is a yeah. positive for the game. All right. Uh let's talk about a thing that you know, not not a lot of people have talked about. I talked a little bit about it with Dave, but I'm always interested when I hear anything marketing related because then I want to talk to you about it. Yeah. So on Friday SmackDown, Logan Paul and KSI came out and they unveiled that the Prime Hydration logo is now going to be the center ring logo on WWE PLEs. And so I think a lot of people are like, eh, like, who cares? Like, you know, the, the ring has been bare forever. Vince McMahon was against putting any logos in the ring. But I was listening to an interview uh, by uh, done by Mark Shapiro, who uh, runs TKO. And he said that that stuff was coming. And he pointed his finger at UFC. He's like, there's things that we've done with UFC as far as marketing and sponsorships that you will see in WWE and this is one of them which is this center ring logo I don't know exactly how much money uh prime hydration ha had to pay to to get there uh it's kind of funny because I'm sure uh they're not paying Logan Paul a ton of money to wrestle for them you know once a month but it was just a fascinating thing if you're into the business and the marketing of this stuff your first center logo is from logan paul's uh drink company i thought that was wild yeah yeah who energy's next <laughs> well oh, i was no. i was telling somebody i was like that like this is the difference like you can tell the difference between wwe and aew just based on their their drink sponsors one of them is old rick flair who's the history of wrestling cannot be told without him having a giant piece of it and on wwe it's like the new guy the it guy Logan Paul is yeah. just a fascinating, you know, thing to to kind of look at when you're comparing the companies. Yeah, um, I, I mean, a very smart move. They should have done this a while ago. They should have capitalized on on advertising on the canvas. Uh, you know, the move to Netflix is probably helping with this also, uh, because we don't know what those numbers are going to look like. We don't know what the ad revenue, you know, the the. The, the basic number of entry is for an ad on on that show. So they're kind of, they're trying to make money everywhere. You know, it's not they're leaving linear television and you have to come up with unique marketing and, and ad revenue uh, ideas. And this is one of them. Now, is it a bad idea? No. Is 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 having that stupid bottle in the middle of the ring <laughs> ugly? Yeah, it's ugly and they could do something else, but uh, this is just the beginning. You know, I can't wait till WrestleMania has a Snickers bar right in the middle of the uh, the ring. It's going to be a hydrate and a prime hydration. For, it's going to be prime. Yeah. At least for this year. Yeah. I love. So I, love I, I think we're going to see a lot of this. I love the memes of like all the old historical wrestling moments with the prime logo. <laughs> <laughs> Those are awesome. Hogan and Hogan and uh, Sheik, January 30th, 1984. <laughs> There's a big giant uh, <laughs> sponsorship in the middle of the ring. But I mean, think about that, though, right? Because the next WWE 2K video game, they'll probably want to put that. And then Logan Paul, I don't know what Logan Paul's agreement is um, as far as may, maybe what agreement he signed gives him the rights to do that in the video game already. Or maybe he has to sign that agreement with 2K. I don't know exactly how stuff works, but, you know, it's, it, it's just the his his ability to come from where he came from and just be as sharp with this stuff and i'm sure he's got partners and he's got business people he's not just you know freewheeling this thing but uh i find i find him to be fascinating i know a lot of people don't like him he's done some Who, questionable Logan? yeah he's done questionable things in the past his behavior as a youtube Listen, he was a dopey kid right yeah. dopey kid uh, if we had a camera on us and millions of dollars, we all probably would have said and done something really stupid. Uh, I don't, I don't know them. I don't watch their content. I have no, it doesn't appeal to me, but I, you know, look at the success. 
forget about the financial success. Look at the success as far as how they market themselves. Both of them, both the polls. Yep. And, and listen, Jake Paul facing Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson on Netflix. You know, I, I turned to Jess the other night. I was like, you know, my 40th is in May. I got, I kind of want to see Mike Tyson do one more effing knockout in my life. Can I've never seen it live. Never seen Tyson fight. Why not go to Dallas and see it? You know? That stadium is going to be huge. Yeah. I can't imagine the tickets are going to be too expensive. Well, I'm sure the, I'm sure the late, I don't know how many people are going to be in there. I, I think, um, I want to say Manny Pacquiao fought a couple of times in that stadium. And I think they got to like 40,000 or so. 40,000? I think. Maybe you more. think they could do 50? You think they could do 50,000, 60,000 in that stadium for Tyson? Tyson's last fight? Tyson's going to have to sell it. I don't know how you can do that just with Jake Paul selling it. No, Tyson's going to have to sell it. He's, He's going to have I mean, to go dude, on all the shows. You know shows. what's selling it? Have you seen his training videos? Holy yes. moly. That guy yes. was a monster. It was, I've never seen someone that fast. His, like that, that size, that fast as a heavyweight, unbelievable. He's, you know, he, th th there was a, there was a crossover that he had in the in the late eighties that almost nobody had. Yeah. And uh, you know, he just he got old and he lost and all that. So but now it's it's just to see him kind of rebuild himself and uh after all of these years and you know, he's kind of got a little bit of that. It's almost like, not that people forgot that he lost to Buster Douglas and Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis and these guys, but he for whatever reason he was able to keep himself out there in the spotlight as a celebrity way longer than, than those guys were. So um, what else would you do? Like if you, if, if someone was like, Hey, Andrew, we want you to come work for TKO and you know, we, want, we have a marketing department and we want to figure out how to, you know, make more money on these little sponsorships and you know, what products should we be working with? How do we attract you? Know, like what else, what else do you think that they should be doing that they're not currently doing today? You know, one, one thing that w we brought up on this show was if they were going to Amazon and the very unique opportunity they would have had with Amazon for live injectable ads that you could purchase. Right. Right. right? And, and I fe almost feel like somebody is about to do this and it's going to become the thing, you know, just like I went every, you know, the news started talking about Twitter and everybody started talking about Twitter, you know, tweet us, tweet us. This is going to be the next big thing. They did the split screen, and I think that was a marketing changeover, doing that split screen with, with ads. It was a very unique way to capture the audience so they don't change the channel and they don't get up and leave because they're still watching. And, and there will be some portion of retention there. I, I think if you're talking about merchandise and capitalizing on that, they're going to have to figure out a way for you to just do one of these and to buy that John Cena shirt. John Cena comes out, right? He comes out. And it says, do you want to purchase it? And you say, yes. What size? You select it. Boom. You're done in 10 seconds. Wait, Cena wears clothes now? Last well, I, I don't know. You know what? That Prime TV. logo would have been great for him to prevent you for that block. <laughs> they could have used the Prime logo there. <laughs> I got I got some great messages about that when yeah, it was happening. Was I didn't even I didn't watch it, but I got so many great messages about it. Um, I, I think that's something that they, they, they could, I mean, AEW could do so much more with marketing. I could, I could tell you, you know, a laundry mm -hmm. list of opportunities they're missing on, but I think WWE, you know, having this TKO UFC kind of new way of thinking, um, they don't think like a professional wrestling company at all anymore. That's gone. And they're an entertainment company. I went to the circus dude on Sunday. I went to the big apple circus at UBS. My kids loved it. And you're looking at this, you're like, it's the same thing. Stage show, 90 minutes, and you go out and they're selling you a bunch of crap outside. You know, it's, that's where they make their money. There's no difference. It's just a, a different avenue for it. I, I don't know. I, I think TKO's, they're going to have some pretty unique opportunities here. And the crossover between UFC and WWE is going to kind of change some stuff. I don't know. What do you think? What, what do you think they're missing as far as, you know, marketing and branding and, and products? I, I think they're, they're, they're pretty solid. I can't. If they put a gun to my head and they said, come up with an idea, that's the only thing I would have right now for them. I think the relationship with Fanatics is one that 
I don't quite yet feel the absolute synergy with. Um, I, you know, there's the collectibles, there's the trading cards that I know it's a, a little bit of a smaller part of their business, but Fanatics now has their trading cards license. Uh, yeah. I would just like to see more of those products uh, on whether it's in commercials or, or just to remind people like, oh yeah, you can go here and buy this now. Not that they, not that they need help with making money. Like they're making money hand over fist, but um, the Netflix thing, I, I'm going to, you know, that's the kind of, the, the, that's the thing where I'm going to keep my eye on. Cause I really love that business uh, of the streaming in industry. And, you know, we, we are at the sort of the beginning stages of that business. And if other people can be like Netflix, but like, you know they have uh they have the the Netflix the the Jake Paul and Tyson fight which they are doing which we we have talked about i know that they have their they have their um their feet in the, in the pool about like an nba show maybe based on the in season tournament um they actually you know what they just got rid of i don't know if you do you watch any of their sports programming on netflix like the golf show Full i have Swing no or, i haven't or, watched or drive any of it no. survive. so drive to survive was, was was pretty pioneering in the in the field because it really helped that f1 business full swing is good i'm just not a, as as big of a golf fan as i used to be so i didn't even really get past the first couple episodes but it's well done and i know season two just recently came out but they had a tennis one as well, and they kind of just canceled it. They were just like, oh, by the way, they, they do a show with the NFL on, on quarterback. So that whole thing is going to be fascinating to me because I, I really watched that Netflix stuff. I, not not that I, not the program, but I watched the business aspect of streaming pretty closely. So WWE and Netflix is that's the one where I'm just going to be like, man, I, I have no idea. I, I'm sure I have some thoughts on how it can improve business, but I'm sure there's going to be things that they figure out that I am not even thinking of right now. So I'm, uh, I'm well, you know, they did that Netflix slam, right? Did you see that? The tennis? Net the oh, tennis yeah, yeah, match? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I didn't see this. A and this is something that, that nobody really brought it up to me before. I'm going to try to log into Netflix here and see if I, I see it. Uh, my producer, MG, he told me, he said, did you know that this was in 4K? And I thought, no, I, I didn't know it was in 4K, but they aired it in 4K. And I'm curious now, and nobody's brought this up. Will will this show, will Raw go to 4K now that it's streaming? That's interesting. You know, um, now I'm not smart enough about the 4K to know what's like true 4K and what's like scaled up and what's scaled down, blah, blah, blah. But the Super Bowl this year, uh, my Hulu live or Hulu with live sports that the picture's fine, but it's not in 4k. No, I was, no. Hulu, I was on Hulu uh, does 1080 or 720. Yeah. So I was on Paramount plus and I took their CBS feed, which was supposed to be in 4k. So we actually watched the 4k feed which I did not have that normal 30 second delay that I have on Hulu. Like it was like real hmm. time. And so the picture was great and it was in real time. And I was like, man, you know, I know that Fox does that, but Fox doesn't have an actual streaming app. You have to actually just go to their, their app and, and watch live. And you can see some of their, their sports in 4k, not SmackDown. Um, so th there's more there's more stuff like that. You just kind of got to dig through and find it. They don't really broad uh, broadcast it very well. I don't think maybe they don't think that the audience is really there yet for it with with the 4K televisions yeah. or whatever. But yeah, like I, I'm now, you know, I'm like, man, I'm going to go instead of watching everything through Hulu. I'm just going to go find it where I can on the, all the 20 streaming services that I have or just go into the Fox app on on my Apple TV and watching like the baseball game or something. So yeah, yeah, they're doing they're doing good stuff, but it's it's like not very they're not advertising it very well for sure. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's I, talk I about let let's talk about the end of this thing. Um, I, I think people are kind of wondering like, are they going to talk about the um, the information that came out from Tim Marchman and John Pollock and uh, and Brandon Thurston and you know I, the naming of the people from the lawsuit. I think I think most people figured that as close to Nick 
to, to WWE as Nick Khan is that he was going to be one of them. Um, I'm yeah. sure people had wondered if Stephanie was going to be one of them. People definitely thought Triple H was going to be one of them, and he wasn't. But that information came out. I don't think there's really too much there uh, that we that we learned outside of the people. Like there's nothing else that came out about the lawsuit that we don't know. Uh, but the the Brock Lesnar to the roster pages is kind of interesting, and I did wonder that if not that Brock was coming. More so that maybe they just want him in their good graces because of, you know, what could happen with more information coming out. I th I, I thought it maybe was more strategic than just, oh, the smoke is cleared on. and we can bring Brock back and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, they obviously are in the know here uh, and they're actively defending themselves and they're getting information. And I'm sure that. This is something th there's more that they know than we do. So I don't know if they know something about Brock that we don't know yet. Uh, you know, I've been pretty. I, I, I the way that I've discussed this is I'm, I'm just going based on facts and, uh, you know, the facts are pretty, pretty wild. They're heinous based on what was in that in that complaint in the filing. Uh, I, I'm just I'm very curious what else comes out because we have not heard Vince's side we haven't heard a real defense from John Laurinaitis and again this is no defense of either one of those people I'm just I'm very curious on what their explanation for such a I, I mean essentially it, it, it's it's sexual abuse by everybody mm -hmm. involved um uh, you know not Janelle Grant obviously but Vince and, and whoever else was partaking in, in whatever they were doing um it's such a bonkers story. And if you read that complaint and you read that legal filing, uh, you are. It, it almost sounds too insane until you see the messages and you're like, oh, no, that's Vince. That's how he types. That's how he sends messages. Uh, I. It's crazy that that that's an old man writing that, right? Mm -hmm. That's an old man. It's not that's not a 25 year old kid. That's not a 40 year old degenerate. That is a 70 something year old man. That is, I, I mean, just the, the, the most insane fantasies. So I sense I, I sense don't know from, how this is going to play out. I sense from some of the fan base and, and mostly the anti WWE fan base that they want information about other people to come out so that they can say, see, I told you so. I told you that this person was involved. I'm like the other way. I hope it is only Vince because yeah, me too. Me too. Then that means that you know nobody else knew about this and hid anything and and tried to 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 do this. I mean, more than likely, if I was to bet, you know, he's not going to be the only person. We all we know that that Brock is is in these texts as well. But there there's definitely a segment of the population who just want all these, you know, I hope Triple H is involved. I'm like, no, I hope he's not. Like, you know, do you, do you, like, as you're covering, not not that we're covering it, and, I, and I'm thankful that Marchman and Thurston and uh, John Pollock, and, and we have Dave on, on, on this stuff too. I'm so happy that these people are covering it because they're smart people. And this, you know, this information in today's day and age can kind of go away. And then you're like, Oh, like what happened to that story? It's like, well, these other stories popped up, but we have some really smart people covering this. So I'm very thankful for them. But as we do a show like this and as we talk about it, like how hard is it for you when you're watching Raw and you're kind of getting excited for WrestleMania and you see Dwayne on SmackDown, you see him at the Oscars. Are you able to enjoy it like normal or is there a hesitation because of all the stuff that we know about this lawsuit? Um, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, you know, let me ask you this. Okay. Let me, let me ask you this. When, when you read it, right. When you read mm -hmm. this lawsuit, cause I, I'm assuming, I'm assuming you read the whole thing. I don't, I don't know. Um, I re I read most, I read most of it. And the reason I didn't finish it is because I was like trying to read it, read up to do a show with Dave. And then I did the show and then I, I there's probably, I probably had like 20 pages left. 
What was your initial thing when you read it? What was like that first thought that came to mind? Did you think reading it that it would develop into what it was? Like the whole story just kind of continues on and it gets worse and more, you know, the deranged or did you like I, I'm I'm curious about it because when I read it, I I I read it on an airplane, so I had all the time in the world, and it just kept getting worse. Mm -hmm. And I was waiting for something in between to kind of be like, oh, okay, maybe this is a little sensationalized, which it's quite possibly it is. That's what these filings are, right? You kind of you take a bad situation and you make it sound as bad as possible to to kind of guide whatever you're trying to do. Not a knock again. And this is all legitimate stuff that happened. Did you feel when you read this as, oh, no, this whole company's going down? Or did you feel like it was more targeted towards Vince? My initial instinct was Vince is a deplorable human and he deserves to be locked up in jail. That was my first instinct. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, there is a question about what people knew. But I don't think we could actually answer any of that stuff from because that's all that's all i was thinking lawsuit. yeah right like the story of vince going around and showing these photos and texting this one and texting that one uh it wasn't done in silence it was done in a very vocal way to the point that he brought her to the office and did what he did in the office so i i reading it i just kept thinking okay you know this is too big for it only to be known by two or three people, right? Mm -hmm. Or four people or five people or six people. This is too big because it went on for three years. It didn't go on. It wasn't an overnight thing. This continued from 2019 to, to what? March of 2022. Mm -hmm. So when I'm reading it, I'm thinking, how are they going to explain because it's going to come out everybody that knew and everybody that had heard and how nobody acted, not an HR department, not a VP. The board reacted when it went public. That's the only time they reacted to this when the Wall Street Journal got it, whether or not it was somebody leaking it or, or their, their one side leaking it. I don't know. But the reaction to something like this, when you have a scenario like this and people know Generally, it's, yeah, everybody knew and nobody said a word. And if that's the case, that is crazy to me that in so a here, company here's that talks about all this stuff, you know, like the bullying and the and, and the women's revolution and equality, you know, they, they are they are very adamant with saying these things publicly. Here, here's and the yet, difference. This though. is what happened. And this is why I don't think we know exactly is because. Did people know about Vince's affairs and extramarital affairs and cheating on Linda, like probably for the last 30 or 40 years, like that stuff seemed to be very public. Since but 1991, there, it, that Playboy there's article. A, there's a different level to what he is accused of doing to Janelle Grant than office gossip about your CEO and president having affairs with younger women like that is a yeah. different level. And I think sometimes people try to equate that as one and the same. Like, well, if he was doing this, then he was doing that. And I don't I don't because I've seen the dynamic in in an office before. Um, I would and maybe this is me just giving humans the benefit of the doubt. I can't imagine that he was telling all of these people all of these things that he was doing and they would have just stayed put now that may be the power thing that he is he used with janelle grant and he uses yeah. that with everybody that could be but I, I i just don't imagine somebody's job you know of you know making a hundred thousand dollars or whatever some of them the other people obviously making a lot it's yeah. like just worth like oh yeah like I knew this thing was going on and I didn't say anything because I couldn't find another job and, and from a company that just fires people a lot anyway. So that's the, that's the part that's hard for me, but we have to wait for more information. That's why I said that. That's why I'm so yeah. thankful of Tim and Brandon and Pollock and, and Dave, uh, because they're, they're not allowing this story to just go by the wayside. Like they're continuing. No, and it shouldn't, so. it shouldn't go by the wayside. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you 
you know, we've seen so many shoot interviews out there, right? Where they bury Vince. They talk about what a heinous person he is. And those people, they didn't know. Like Bret Hart. Bret Hart came out. I mean, Bret's, Bret's was pretty... Uh, he was very vocal about what a heinous thing this was, and rightfully so. But, you know, he was shocked when he, when he heard this stuff, but, you know, to the extent of what it is. And I, and I mm -hmm. think that's a lot of people. I, you know, the, in that complaint, it was, you know, they're, he's, they're talking about how Vince was showing it to everybody and was talking about this and was so vocal about it. But somebody is going to spill the beans if you keep talking. So. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering, and I'm not again. I'm not denying. I'm not saying that you know she's making it up. I'm saying somebody will come forward if this is yeah. the case, and they're yeah. gonna have to. I hope they have that person lined up. Like if you know this goes, yeah. it's, it's a you know there's gonna be a trial here. You have those people I, lined up and go. Yeah, I, I I mean, they have Vince's phone, right? That could if Vince is texting these photos to other numbers then we know we they would know and, and remember vince vince is the one that stopped the payment on the ndas yeah and that has led to this so very it, it, it's all uh, uncomfortably fascinating to read and to kind of try to comprehend because it's so gross you know on it, all accounts it, as a human being it, and, and the yeah. acts of what he, even if it's consensual okay i know i know we're a little over and, and i i haven't had an opportunity to talk even if this is consensual to some extent it's still deplorable it's still deplorable behavior listen and i'm not a prude <laughs> you know i don't i i think what what adults do is up to them and i don't get in the way i, I don't judge but you read that, you read some of those things and you're like, what is even on the simplest of, you know what? It was consensual. Uh, let's let in, in a weird world, let's say it was, it's still, you, you could tell that this man, it, he's a, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know what I would, I would call him. You remember, I, do you remember beyond the mat when Jake Roberts was talking about the addictions that he had from being on the road. Yes. And dude, that line has stuck with me forever, forever. Cause he was, his eyes told the story of you. You're on the road and you, you meet a fan and you go out to dinner and you sleep with her. The next time you don't go out to dinner and you just sleep with her. And then you go to another town and there's someone that doesn't even care. They just show up at your house or your apartment, and two becomes three, three becomes four, and now you're doing all this behavior that you've never done in your life. And he Maybe basically said, that. he basically said it was, he couldn't just, like, be with his wife anymore. Like, his, just He couldn't of, do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, that's the kind of grisly stuff that, you know, we would always hear about story-wise about wrestling. Like, you'd hear these grisly stories about that kind of stuff in, in the road, and you know, like back then they would call them ring rats. You know, I don't know what groupies, whatever you want to call the the women who were just out there to, you know, be with their celebrity or whatever. Um, yeah. And so that, you know, we we've known about that stuff. But this is like something that I don't think I could have imagined. And so when I read it, it was like, oh, this is kind of not real. Like my your brain kind of does that a little bit. You're like this doesn't seem real and then you realize like this is the report this is the accusation this is a woman's yeah. story about what happened to her and then it just becomes like ill like you just feel sick so um, 78 years yeah. old this man by the way 78 years old he started the relationship three years ago uh four years five years ago now so he was still in his 70s when yeah. this happened yep ah oh, man well you, it's uh wild it's, it's, we're going to keep talking about it because it's yeah. going to be it's going to be out there. The reporting, you know, the maybe there's going to be more wash, uh, more um, pieces from uh, Wall Street Journal. Uh, but, yeah, you know, and this is not stuff that we normally like talking about, but I think it's important. And we need to also keep the, the story out there for folks just to remember, like, it's just not about yeah. WrestleMania in the rock. It is about some of these other things. So.
Yeah. All righty. All right. So Andrew and I will be back next week. We're on that road to WrestleMania, so we'll have a lot more we news. Are. We didn't even really talk about the stuff that happened on Raw. Uh, we probably should have at least talked about that. Cody terrible. was crying. Yeah. Well, that was a great promo. But yeah. the Maxine and Candice LeRae thing was like maybe the worst thing oh. that Triple H has booked since he's taken over. You know, uh, I said this last week and, and, and I'll say it. some of those like remnants of Vince still exist. <laughs> that that was the, the that, that Diarrhea Dwayne. Vince. Yeah. Diarrhea Dwayne, the hyper bullying. Uh, you know, I, I would joke about it all the time and say that the women's division for a very long time was just mean girls. Just mm -hmm. everybody was mean. Even the baby faces were just total assholes. And, uh, you know, some of that still exists. And we saw that with that terrible angle. Yes. Yes, it was really bad. Hopefully they just like forget about it and they hear that yeah. people just thought it was stupid. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for, for doing this. Thanks to producer John. So for Andrew, I am Double G. We will see you when we see you. Peace out.